So today let's explore the battery backup inverter from this fluorescent fixture. In the previous episode I was exploring this main mainness powered inverter for it, which powers both of these 58 watt tubes in a series. And now let's take a look at this battery backup one, which runs on a 4.8 volt nickel cadmium battery pack. I took it out and I'm trying to recover it, I'm trying to charge it using a bench power supply. But it might be already worn out. Here is the indication LED. And the main inverter is put back and it actually runs. The main is connected both to this inverter and the other one, which has a relay in it, which clicks. And when it's running on a main, it connects the tubes to the main inverter. But when it's running on a battery, probably it has to disconnect it using the relay and run one of the tubes on this one. And it backs up just one of them and not at the full power, of course. And of course the fixture doesesn't want to fit into the view. These 58 watt tubes are 150 centimeters long. And here's the battery pack I'm trying to charge using a bench power supply and also monitoring the voltage on it. And here's the marking of it. Nickel cadmium 4.8 volts, 1.7 amp hours, some codes. And the date code, is it June of 2015? The fixture was removed and probably replaced by some crappy Chinese LEDs in 2023. So it was in use for 8 years, let's say. Maybe less if the battery was sitting in some storage for some time. I'm trying to charge the battery and here's the voltage on it. And initially the battery looked hopeless. It was showing about 11 volts voltage drop, which indicated a very high internal resistance. Now it's actually dropping less, it seems like its internal resistance dropped significantly. This is 200 milliamps, 500 milliamps, 800 milliamps, 1 amp charging current. At 200 milliamps, it's slightly under 1.5 volts per cell. At 500 milliamps, it's about 1.6 or 1.7 volts per cell. Still sort of a high internal resistance, but it's getting better. Of course the output voltage of the power supply is turned up until it runs in the current mode. But the battery pack is probably worn anyway. If it doesn't work I can test it using some other nickel cadmium battery packs. I made of cells from a dumpster drill. Nickel cadmium cells can still work after 20-30 years of sitting, but if you keep constantly trickle charging them to keep them ready for use, they wear out over time. The fixture was probably constantly keeping it fully charged and I guess the backup inverter wasn't going via a switch. Even when the fixture was off, the backup inverter was still connected to mains and trickle charging this 24 hours a day for probably 8 years. Here is how the fixture was wired. It's a bloody convoluted mess. And the backup inverter had a separate connection to mains, so I guess this one was always connected and this one went via a switch to turn the lights off. And strangely the backup inverter was meant, according to the pictures on it, for a magnetic ballast fixture. But they used it in combination with an electronic ballast, which on top of it was meant for two tubes, which are in series. So the backup inverter is wired in a completely different way than the picture on it shows. It contains some relay in it, and when the tube is running on the backup inverter, it has to be disconnected from the main one. And this tube is backed up, this one not. Now let's call it charged. It keeps some voltage. Let's put it back, plug it into the holes and then let's try to power it and remove the mains voltage to see if it backs up. And let's plug it into mains. It runs on the main inverter. Let's unplug it. Does it back up? It does not. Now I'm connecting mains just to the backup inverter, not to the main one. It blinks. When I unplug it and plug it back in. It briefly blinks but it doesn't want to run. Let's measure the battery voltage. I was trying to charge it. It goes down to a 3 point something. It's not holding a charge. It goes below 4 volts which probably makes the backup inverter shut down. It has a good voltage when it's not drawing a current from it, but when it tries to draw a current from it, it pulls the voltage down below 4 volts because the battery pack has a very high internal resistance. So we can call it rotten now. I will try to charge these and put the connectors on one of them and let's see. Let's try to load it using a 9.1 ohm resistor. With no load there is a nice voltage, but when I load it using this resistor, 
The voltage drops below 3 volts at just 0.3 amps. And that's a completely rotten battery pack. This is not going to work. Let's try to load it using a car headlight lamp and it's 0.1 volts. Bloody hell. Charging the two battery packs in a series, the ones from the dumpster. They were completely discharged, now the voltage goes up very quickly. It went up to 800 milliamps. One battery pack of four is charging at about 1.4 volts per cell. And here's the total voltage of eight. It seems the other pack has one shorted cell in it, two cells in it. This is right. The other two cells in it. In this pair of cells one is probably shorted. They should be charging at about 1.4 something or 1.5 volts per cell. They don't have access to this center point, but this pair actually seems to have one cell shorted. But at least I have one good 4.8 volt pack here. This is the voltage of the good pack. I'm charging it at 800 milliamps. And these are 1200 milliamp hours. So the charging should take one and a half hours plus some extra time for the losses. And it's charged. And these cells actually stay cool during the charging, even at a higher current. Until they are fully charged and only then they get hot. It was cold until about 1 hour 40 minutes and suddenly hot at 1 hour 50 minutes. And also at a high current the shorted cell seems to have recovered. But this one still seems to be better I guess. These ones don't seem to be completely rotten. They can actually light up a lamp. Both in series now. And the lamp draws about 3 amps. And the voltage under this load doesn't actually drop that much. This is a 2.5C discharge for the batteries. And the other pack is a bit weaker because of the weak cell. Well, I guess just three cells are working now. After some cycles the cell could still recover, but let's use the better one. Now it finally could work. Let's plug it in. And it's backing up. It's actually quite dim, but that's actually expected. How much does it draw from the battery? 1.4 amps. And it's about 7 watts. The voltage on the battery shouldn't drop that much under the load. And when I plug it to mains, it's charging the battery. It automatically turns on when the mains voltage disappears. Now I was connecting the mains voltage just to this one. Let's try to connect it to both. Plugging in. Now the main inverter is running both tubes for brightness. And I'm plugging it in one tube, low brightness. So it's working and cooperating. Normal minus operation, backup operation, minus operation, backup operation. Nice! And now of course an oscilloscope and a 2 kV probe. Connecting it between the ends of the backed up tube and let's plug in the battery. The minus is disconnected now. And it's running about 21.3 kHz. Let's show it closer. When it's starting, it's a higher voltage and then it reduces. And of course it says 50 volts per division here. So 150, 20, 10, but it's always 10 times more. Because the oscilloscope only has a setting for times 10 probe, but the high voltage probe is times 100. I guess the peak voltage on the tube is about 400 volts now. And of course the pulses are in just one polarity. So it's basically a pulsed DC current causing an uneven wear of the electrodes and mercury migration in the tube. The tube must love it. A very reduced power and pulse the DC current. That's absolutely horrible. And the incoming power is about 7 or 8 watts. The voltage time is the current, basically. But now let's get it out and see the internals, finally. And now it's out, it was on a double-sided sticky tape. The pinnacle of 21st century mounting techniques, together with hot melt glue and zip ties. And it says 0618, and this one says 0615. Was the 06 actually the year and this is the week? Then it would be in operation for 17 years. Maybe this explains better why this one is so rotten. But now let's open this and see what's in it. It's plastic, unlike the main inverter which was in metal. I guess there is no better way of opening it than just prying it. And that's it. And let's take a closer look at it. Here the mains comes in. You can see some interference capacitor, some inrush resistor, some interference inductor, smoothing capacitor, a switching power supply transformer probably, the primary electrolytic capacitor, secondary electrolytic capacitor. This is I guess the charging power supply. And here's the inverter with its transformer. The relay disconnecting it from the main as ballast. Some power resistor, a coil, a small capacitor, the battery connections. 
couple interference capacitors here maybe or resonant capacitors another interference capacitor but they don't see any power semiconductors here no power semiconductors through hole so it all has to be SMD I guess let's take it from the housing and see the other side and yes there is a lot of SMD components a bridge rectifier, some diodes, resistors, small transistors, a diode here's probably the switching chip for the switching power supply the optocoupler for it couple more transistors, diodes and some bigger SMD transistors these two are probably for the inverter and several diodes here for some reason is it working as a multiplier? with these capacitors maybe the power supply is just a normal switching power supply, a flyback nothing really special about it it uses a chip with a built-in high voltage switching transistor so there is no discrete transistor the board looks convoluted but it's actually isolated from a mains I guess and the isolation line goes through here and here it goes under the optocoupler let's measure the voltage at the output of the switching power supply as this capacitor it produces about 8.2 volts here's the primary side capacitor it actually discharges quite quickly when I unplug it that's the primary side capacitor the secondary side capacitor I'm trying to reverse engineer the schematic of it and the open circuit voltage on the battery terminals with the battery not connected is 7.5 volts nothing active controlling the charging and the switching power supply is connected to the battery just via a power resistor, a diode and some current sensing resistor here and here's the simplified schematic of it it's basically just a rear oscillator it has the input inductor here, some protective zener and the pair of transistors alternately switching the halves of this center tap's primary and it's self oscillating because there is this feedback winding going back into the bases of the transistors some snubber capacitors on the transistors some resonant capacitor on the primary and the circuit can be disabled by removing the positive voltage from these resistors and thus removing the base current of these transistors and to enable it the base of this PNP transistor is pulled down it connects the positive voltage here and the transistors get the current into the bases and because of the feedback it starts oscillating and the secondary has a resonant capacitor on it and this capacitor in the doubler with some high voltage diodes and this is basically a doubler with no smoothing it supplies a pulsed DC voltage into the tube for simplicity I didn't draw the relay I just drew the circuitry as it is when the relay is in the backup position disconnecting the tube from the main inverter and connecting it to this one there's really not much to it these blue high voltage capacitors are these ones this inductor is this and this power resistor is this here's the relay a 9 volt coil and basically two contacts and each of them can go two ways and typically each of these two base resistors goes to one base but they did it this crappy non-symmetrical way probably to make the board layout simpler and of course rear oscillators produce a sine wave and they have a resonant capacitor at least at one of the windings the transistors alternately switch one of them is always on pulling one end of the primary to zero volts and the other one swings in a sine wave half cycle shape here are the voltages on the collectors of the transistors and they alternately have these sine wave half cycles on them and the orange line is the waveform on the transformer center tap and there has to be an inductor between this and the positive supply rail and when this end of the primary is more negative this transistor is on because this end of the feedback winding is more positive which keeps the transistor on and when this end of the primary is more negative this transistor is on and it's kept on because this end of the feedback winding is more positive and the transistors switch over when the sine wave on the transformer goes through the zero crossing and if you don't trust me, trust my oscilloscope these are the two ends of the primary and this is one end of it and the center tap and this is the collector of one transistor and the base of the same transistor so that's it, another interesting retro circuit and of course if you made it that far please consider subscribing, using the thanks button or supporting this channel on Patreon because this weird channel really couldn't exist without you and I really have to thank to all of you who already support me